जगतपति गोपेश गोपी कांत राधा कांत नमोस्तुते तप्त कंचन गोरंगी राधे वृंदानेश्वरी वृषभानु सुधे देवी प्रणमा हरे प्रिय बोलो श्री राधे गोलोकानंद भगवान की जय जय हरे कृष्ण हरे हरे कृष्ण All right, so we will in the round two of Sri Mad Bhagavatam Kanto one quiz. Right? Did you like it yesterday? Yeah, it was nice. Good. Yeah, it's a good summary. Yeah, at least at a high level. <laughs> <clears throat> so, all right. So let me bring it up again, and then we can start. All right. Uh, sure. <clears throat> hey, you see the see the screen, yeah? No, I don't see anything. Okay. Now it's now it's see. <clears throat> All right. So, Ham Hari Krishna. Hari Krishna. So, do you like the questions yesterday? Yes. Yeah. All right. So, ready for the next round? Um, okay. So, we did this yesterday. Yeah. Like, what some memories did Bhishma Pitama remembered while focusing on and doing this tuti to Lord Sri Krishna? So, we talked about you know how. Lord Krishna breaks his own vow. खुद की प्रतिज्ञा को तोड़ते हैं. Just because Bhishma Pitamal की प्रतिज्ञा होती है कि आज श्री कृष्ण को हथियार उठाएंगे युद्ध में, right? So then Lord Krishna gets down from the rath. He picks up the wheel and runs behind Bhishma Pitamal, right? So that's how he keeps Bhishma Pitamal's pratigya. And then lot of other things we remember, right? For Bhishma Pitamal remembers well. Uh, In um, Indraprest, right? When they at the end, when everything is done after the yagya, how all the rishis and everybody comes together and prays to Lord Sri Krishna. So he remembers all that and all the lot of other other things, right? And <clears throat> oh yes, so this was the homework. <laughs> Whose son was Sonak Muni? Sonak. Hmm? Rishi, right? Rishi, yes. So, how did you say something? No. <laughs> Then your homework. Whose son was Sonak Muni? So, Bhrigu Rishi's son was Sonak Muni. Nice, Nisha. Right. And then this was another homework. While traveling on a pilgrimage, Mahatma Vidhu received knowledge of self. From which sage? So Mahatma Vidur. Narad Muni. No, Maitreya. 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 Right. So Maitreya Rishi, very famous Rishi. So he is the one who gave self knowledge to Mahatma Vidur. Okay. 
So I'm going to ask those two questions again tomorrow. Sonak Muniz, Trigurishis, Shyam, and <laughs> Maitreya <Yashi. laughs> Um All right, we did this one. What was the primary pur purpose for it for Maharaj for Mahatma Vidu's return to Hastinapur? To remind uh, the trust, trust. Yeah. for right. sannyas. Correct, correct, right. Nice. And we already talked about the gross material body made of those five elements. Yeah, sky, earth, vayu, jal. Agni, vayu, jal. So let's move on to the next round of quiz. Who informed about Maharaj Dithrash plan after leaving Hastinapur to Maharaj Yudhishthira? Like after Maharaj Dithrash left Hastinapur, Maharaj Yudhishthira was so much worried and he did not know where they went. So who came and informed like where Maharaj Dithrash is? Do you know? So it was Dev Rishi Narad. Do you know, like Dev Rishi Narad appeared and then he told, like, don't worry about Maharaj Dithras. He is in you know northern side and he is getting ready to take sannyas. Uh, he's getting ready to go back uh, to Godhead, leave his material body. And you know, that's how he pacified Maharaj this stuff. So it was Dev Rishi Narad who appeared, you know, Dev Rishi Narad can appear anytime, anywhere, right? So so he's the one who appeared and then he informed Maharaj this stuff. Yeah. Hare Krishna Mukesh. <clears throat> Hare Krishna. So, so the next question is Maharaj Yudhishthira, while observing the inauspicious signs on the earth, what was he worried about? Yeah, we read the whole chapter where Maharaj Yudhishthira was thinking, right? You know, all the signs are inauspicious. What's going on? What was he concerned about? He was concerned about Lord Krishna leaving the, the earth. Right, yeah. Remember, he was concerned about Lord Krishna leaving this earth, going back to Godhead, yeah, to his own abode. Who informed Maharaj this still that Lord Krishna has gone back to his abode? Arjun. Arjun, right? So Maharaj Yudhishthira was worried that Arjuna had not returned back from Dwarika. And then finally when Arjuna returned, he was asking so many questions to Arjun, like because Arjuna was so upset and he was he had tears in his eyes. And so Maharaj Yudhishthira was telling him, like, did you do anything wrong? Did you do anything religiously wrong? So why are you like this? And then Maharaj Arjuna, then Arjun informs Maharaj Yudhishthira that. You know, he is just tears in his eyes that because Lord Krishna has left them. All right. So then when he was telling Maharaj Yudhishthira that Lord Krishna has gone back to his abode, what are the few memories he remembered about Lord Krishna? Some memories which Arjuna was remembering Right? How Lord Krishna helped them. So, Gita, the Gita Upadeshi game mm -hmm. in the battlefield. Right. What else? Did you also remember about this, um, how he treated him while uh, he was driving his wrath? Right? Despite uh, being Sri Krishna, he uh, treated him like a sarthi or a yeah. I think that was one of those. Right. Hmm? That's one. What else Arjun was remembering? So many things Lord Krishna has done. Eh? Draupadi Shyamvar, right? Lord Krishna actually took him there. Draupadi Shyamvar, how he, you know, won the Shyamvar. He was remembering that. Uh, I was remembering Durvasa Masi, Durvasa Muni's uh, thing, right? When Durvasa Muni, Muni came and, uh, you know, he asked all the Brahmins, he comes with so many Brahmins. Do you remember the number? 
how many brahmans he comes up comes together with yeah even i forgot but i think it was around 10000 or so more 10000 yeah so durasa muni comes with so many brahmans and they had to feed and then how lord krishna saved them right how lord krishna ate a rice one rice and then which filled in the stomach of all these rishis and brahmans and then he was remembering the kandav prast you know how lord krishna helped in uh, building a indra prast and then most importantly importantly in the yuddh in kurukshetra you know he was remembering that how lord krishna actually helped him in uh, fighting on the war right in fighting with guru dronachari himself with karn yeah remember with, with bishma pitama <laughs> like so there was all big right yeah yeah so who can fight with bishma pitama right or even guru dronachari or karn so that's all arjun was remembering about lord sri krishna right so upon hearing of lord krishna is returning to his abode what did maharaj yudhishthir decide what did he decide to do he gave his throne to maharaj parikshit mm -hmm. made him the king right yeah. and decided to to uh, take sanyas correct right so yeah. he also decided to take sanyas and actually essentially go back to godhead to because he said his kaliyuga he, he could see he could visualize that kaliyuga is about to come and when maharaj krishna left he left and once maharaj this to decided then all the pandus followed him one by one right and then as we know dropdi and subhadra followed him right and so like that all the pandus Okay, back to Godhead. All right, let's see the next round. <clears throat> Mahatma Vidur was whose manifestation on earth? Yamraj. Yamraj, yeah, remember? <laughs> so, and well, there was a, there's a story behind it, right? Remember, Yamraj was cursed by a rishi and uh, to to uh, to be born on earth. and because of that he had to come and take birth on earth and he was and he came in as mahatma vidur who represented the personality of religious principles and the personality of earth while kaliyug was approaching so remember we read about all the no no we we read about the conversation between the religion yeah I was uh, one of them was dharma you know three right. like yeah and the other one was was it was it bhumi yes. cow and bull right the bull represented oh. the religion mm -hmm. and cow represented yeah. the earth yeah so there is no conversation between the two right and then how did maharaj parikshit received age of kali So if you remember right when the the conversation between cow and the bull was going on and and there was a person who was hitting the cow and the bull was on three legs right and that's how maharaj parikshit he recognized that bull is none other than the religion himself and then he caught kali but then because kali surrendered to maharaj parikshit he allowed him to stay in lot of places you remember like what places right so places where people are like gambling or drinking and those kind of places mm -hmm. uh, yeah and yeah. animals killing those kind of places he was allowed to stay um yeah who ashram maharaj parikshit entered while he was hungry and thirsty um 
Sonic Muni. Sonic Muni. No, no. Sonic Muni was the head of all the issues, right? No, no, no not Sonic Muni. Uh, something. Something. Uh, Some. Some issue. Yes. Some issue. Some issue. Some issue. Some issue. Some uh, and then when he entered, what did he see? That Sami Krishi is in deep in meditation. He had no idea who is there. He had all these long hairs and he has been, who knows how many years he has been in meditation. Yeah. Yeah. What was the name of the Brahman boy who cursed Maharaj Parikshit? And what was the curse? What was the Ringi. name Shringi, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Shringi was the name. That the Takshak will bite and it will die in seven days. Correct, right? That was the curse. So Brahman boy, uh, Shringi, he was upset, of course, and then he gave this curse, and that seven day. And Takshak Nag, right? What is the story behind Takshak Nag? Do you remember? Yeah, when Pandus, when they build the Indraprast, they destroy the Khandav Prast, right? And while doing it, the Takshasila, and that was the city of all the Nags, and Arjun destroyed that, right? And so since then, the Takshak, I mean, they wanted to take revenge with the Pandus, and and so, you know, it was Takshak Nag, but it's all you know, it's all decided already, correct? I mean, we say na, jo hona hai, wohi hona, honi ko likha hua hai already. And, but then there's a story, right? There's a relation, how all those things happen. So that's how the Takshak Nag was going to bite Maharaj Parikshit after seven days. All right, one more round. Why did Brahman boy curse Maharaj Parikshit? Why did he curse him? Because he put a dead snake around the rishi's um, neck. He was thirsty. Right. right. Because Samik Rishi was his father, right? Srangi's father was Samik Rishi. And Arjun put a, uh, sorry, Maharaj Parikshit put a dead snake on him. And so Brahman boy Srangi, he really got upset. And he thought like those kings have gone out of their mind. They don't know what they are doing and who are they, right? And then he curses Maharaj Parikshit. And we already saw the curse. He gave him seven days of life. So what did Maharaj Parikshit do after hearing the curse? And how did he felt about it? How did he feel about it? He was happy to hear that. Yeah, he felt relieved, right? And happy because why? Why did that? Why is that? Like nobody will be happy, right? If say like, hey, a snake is going to come and bite you in seven days, <laughs> it's not going to be happy. He was a big devotee of Lord, so he knew that you know, um, within seven days he will go back to Godhead. So he was happy about it. Yeah, that's one reason that um, because. You know, this will make him focus on Krishna consciousness and he can go back to Godhead. But the really reason, the first reason he was happy, right? Why was he happy? Hare Krishna. Uh, Hare Krishna, Sami Krishna Prabhu. Sorry, Rasikshan Prabhu. Hare Krishna. And uh, so the reason he was happy is because, you know, any good person, when he does something wrong, he feels really bad and then he thinks you know he should be punished for that so that's what Maharaj Parikshit was thinking when he put a dead snake at that point whatever happened in his mind but when he was coming back he was feeling so bad that why did he do this like what maybe you know and he thought so many things so when he heard that and he really wanted to do prayership and then when he heard that Sringi actually has cursed him and he was relieved that he has got punishment for his karma so that's why I was happy. And then, of course, he knew that it's about time for him to 
get away from all these bindings and then start focusing on Krishna consciousness. Yeah. So Maharaj Parikshit then decides to do the fasting. Yeah, seven days fasting unto death. He knows and he goes to Ganges and then decides to like totally dedicate himself to Krishna consciousness. Nothing else, no other meditation, no other way of thinking or you know realizing the soul or something like that. He realized that the best way to go back to Godhead is Krishna dedication, Krishna consciousness. He just wanted to hear about the Krishna stories and dedicate to Lord Sri Krishna. So name few rishis arrived at the Ganga river after hearing about Maharaj Parikshit's fasting. So who all rishis came in there? Bhegu, Atri, Maharshi Narad. Yeah, Bhegu Rishi Narad, Atri, Bhegu Rishi, who else? Vashisht. Vashisht Muni, yes, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, okay. on uh, Vishwamitra. Yeah. Uh, uh, Kesha, mute. Um, so all the I'm saying Kashyap. Kashyap. Patmuni, Parshuram. Yeah. So all these rishis. <laughs> Dev Rishi, Brahma Rishi, a lot of them are Brahma Rishi, right? We read about Brahma Rishi, who are Brahma Rishis. Uh, we read that time about Sapta Rishis, right? Who are the Sapta Rishis? Uh, and all of them uh, came in Maharaj Parikshit. And then what was the reason? Why did they come in there? They wanted to hear Srimad Bhagavatam from Srimad They knew that Srimad Bhagavatam is going to be recited here. They already knew that by none other than Suddeva Goswami Ji. And so by the excuse of Tirt, they came in to, and came in there to hear the Bhagavad. And of course, to give blessings to Maharaj Parikshit, right? Uh, who is known as Vishnu Rak and why? Who is Vishnu Rath? Vishnu Rath. Uh, I can't recollect. Is it Parikshit? Maharaj Parikshit. Then. Parikshit? Yes. And what does this mean? What is Vishnu Rath means? What's the meaning of that? Vishnu? Vishnu, okay. Vishnu saved him. Right, one who Krishna is saved him. Yeah, that's correct. One who is yeah. protected by from uh, Ashutama's Brahmastra. Right, right. Yeah, so Mah none other than Maharaj Parikshit is known as Vishnu because he is protected by Lord Krishna. All right. Who started reciting Srimad Bhagavatam to Maharaj Parikshit? Sukhdev so, Goswami. Goswami, <laughs> right? <laughs> Some simple questions seem tough. <laughs> right, Soham, do you know? Soham? Huh? You started deciding Srimad Bhagavatam to Maharaj Parikshit. Sukhdev Goswami. Yeah, see? Such a simple question. Very nice. All right, we're almost very close. What direction Maharaj Parikshit was facing while sitting at the Ganges? Which direction he was? Is it north? Is it north? Yeah. So he was at the southern corner of the Ganga and then he was facing north. Because that's that's what we believe in, right? North is where the mm -hmm. heaven is. Not <laughs> What are the two questions Maharaj Parikshit asked Sukhdev Goswami Ji? Do you remember? Mm. All right, so let's read I that. 
I think one of one of them one of them he asked was that when a person is on his deathbed, what should he right. think or decide to something? I think there was one, and the other one was how can you make your life? It was more about you know devotion or I don't remember everything, but I think there was the, you know was one. The how other one was what you should not do. What you should not do? Yes. Yeah. Right. Very nice. Now that's good. So let's. So I copied it here exactly as is. Right, so Maharaj Parikshit said to Sukhdev Goswami that you are the spiritual master of great sons and devotees. I am therefore begging you to show the way of perfection for all persons, and especially for one who is about to die. Yeah, and Swami Prabhupada says like a person who is about to die is everyone actually. Somebody in ten years, somebody in hundred years, right? <laughs> But everybody is going to die one day, right? So, what Maharaj Parikshit is asking is, show the way of perfection for all the persons. And please let me know what a man should hear, chant, remember, and worship, and also what he should not do. Please explain all this to me. Yeah? Yeah, we only have one minute left. Uh, but those are the two questions, and then Sukhdev Goswami starts answering him. So we'll start that tomorrow again, right? And let me let's do the kirtan for one minute, and then we'll start reading the Bhagavatam tomorrow again. So just give me a second. Oh, my God.